Welcome to Village Point Church Online. We're so delighted that you join us. You connected with us this morning here. Here's Andre, Pastor Leandro with you this morning. We just want to say special welcome. And I want to share with you a couple of verses from scripture that have encouraged me this week. We pray that the Lord has been strengthening you. Hear the word of the Lord to you this morning. From Isaiah 43. Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Let's sing our praises to him. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come gather together to lift up your name to call on our sake to fall on your grace in the name of the father in the name of the son in the name of the spirit lord we come we're gathered together to lift up your name to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. Take it over. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down, as your people sing. We will rise with you, lifted on your wings, and the world will see death. Our God saves. Of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we gather together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down, as your people sing. We will rise with you, lifted on your wings, and the world will see death. Our God saves, our God saves, there is hope in your name.
breaks the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings Here we go. this, this is, is amazing grace this is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for you've done for me thank you Jesus for all you've done for us who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king of glory who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings sing this is amazing grace this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place you've done for me thank you Jesus for all you've done for us sing worthy is the lamb sing it worthy is the lamb worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave Jesus you're worthy Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. There's none like you. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy. Worthy, worthy is of the King honor and glory. Who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Yeah. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for that you've done for me Like to share some opportunities coming up this week with you. The church has put together some nice yard signs so you can put on your front yard and people can know about how to connect with Village Point Church online. We're also having a prayer meeting again. We hosted one last week. We had about 16 people that joined. This happens on Zoom and you should have received an email with information about how to join. There's on your screen there the meeting ID. 
And if you didn't, you can email us at info at villagepoint.church. We'll send you information on how to join at 7 o'clock on Monday night. We'll spend some time in prayer as well. We want to share with you also some ways that you can connect with us. You can do that through social media, for example, through our Facebook page and Instagram. And also you can read our weekly email and visit our website. And then lastly, we will continue this morning. We will continue to worship with our giving. And this is an amazing privilege that we have to give to the Lord a portion of what he's blessed us with. And, and as we sing this next song, we will reflect on God's provision for us and his faithfulness to us. So this is an opportunity you can, you can give. There's three ways to give. You can text, you can drop a check by the office, you can email, uh, mail it to us, or you can also give online. But let me pray for us for this moment as well as we continue in worship. Father, we're so thankful for your provision. God, we are blessed beyond measure. You have promised that you would always provide for not our wants, but for our needs. And you are our good shepherd that is always, always providing, always with us. So we are thankful for what you've given us. And we, we take this moment as we continue in worship to, to give back a portion of what you've given to us to bless the ministry of Village Point Church and the missionaries in our community. God, we pray that you bless this and you would multiply it so that your name will be made famous. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue in worship. Sing about God's faithfulness. You are good, you are good, when there's nothing good in me. You are love, you are love, on display for all to see. You are light, you are light, when the darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope, you have covered all my sin. You are peace, you are peace, when my fear is trickling. You are true, you are true, even in my wanderings. You are joy, you are joy, you're the reason that I sing. You are life, you are life, in you death has lost its sting. Sing. 
my heart will sing no other name Jesus no other name Jesus my heart will sing no other name Jesus Jesus my heart will sing no other name Sing one more time. Jesus, my heart will sing. No other name. Jesus, Jesus. I'm running. And oh, I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love. Good morning. My name is Leandro Nogueira. I am the lead pastor here at Village Point Church. I'm so glad you are joining us online. If you are new with us, I love to tell you more about our church as well as to pray for you and to pray for your family. You can email us at info at villagepoint.church info at villagepoint.church and someone will follow up with you. If you are already a part of VPC, I'd like to know that you are joining us online as well. So please send us an email, same info at villagepoint.church. Send us an email if you have any prayer requests. We'd love to pray for you as well. Now let me tell you what we have planned for Easter. We are starting each day Starting tomorrow morning, we are going to have a devotional, and it will be posted on our church website as well as our church Facebook page in the mornings for you, for you to prepare your heart in anticipation for our Easter celebration. So we're prepar preparing something very special for the next few days here leading up to Sunday. So on Good Friday, also, we will have a... Uh, communion service will have a Good Friday service via Zoom. And again, this is, we've done it in the past. It's working with us uh, for the prayer. So this is the first time we're taking communion uh, remotely this way. This is the first time we'll be doing our Easter services this way. But I want you to be engaged. We were graciously provided with individual communion cups and wafers. So you can stop by the church Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. You can pick up what is enough for your family. It's, they are individually packaged. So you will take it home and then you will be ready for our Friday evening service, Good Friday service with communion. And then on Eastern Sunday, on uh, Sunday at 1030 in the morning, we can invite someone to join us online. Make sure you pick up a sign, a yard sign. You know, plant it in front of your house, and if you need us to bring you one, we can do that too. But I would love for you to invite someone to join us as we celebrate the risen King together. If you are familiar with the church calendar today, we celebrate Palm Sunday, which took place five days prior to Jesus' 
crucifixion over 2,000 years ago. The triumphal entry account is one of the few stories in the life of Jesus that is recorded by all four Gospels. They all talk about it, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Therefore, this event is of utmost importance to both their original audience and to us today. Let me give you some context before I read this morning's passage. The Jews had heard about a Messiah who would come to set them free from centuries, for centuries. Their ancestors, their parents, their grandparents, their grand great parents, they all had talked about it. Perhaps the time had finally come where the heavy weight of the Roman oppression would come to an end and justice, peace, and prosperity would once and for all reign in Israel. You see, even those who did not believe in Christ as the Messiah, they were also hoping for a deliverer, someone who would free them from all injustice and establish a new era of prosperity and well-being. Jesus' fame had spread and people were following him everywhere. Jesus had taught the multitudes. He healed the sick. He calmed the storm. He miraculously multiplied two fish and five loaves of bread and fed thousands of people as we saw last week. And after healing a blind man, Mark 11, start on verse 1, recounts the story. When they approached Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and told them, go into the village ahead of you. As soon as you enter it, you will find a coat tied there on which no one has ever set. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it, and it will send it back, will send it back right away. So they went, and they found a coat outside the street, tied by a door. They untied it, and some of those standing there said to them, what are you doing untying the coat? They answered them just as Jesus had said, so they let him go, let him go. They brought the coats to Jesus and threw their clothes on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their clothes on the road, and others spread leafy branches cut from the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Bethany was the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. And this will be, Bethany will be the place Jesus will spend the final days, the final week of his life. And an interesting fact that I want to highlight from this passage is up until this point, Jesus had walked everywhere. He had ministered throughout Jerusalem, and he had walked everywhere except for the times that Jesus was riding on a boat. This is the one and only time we find Jesus riding an animal instead of walking. And that, for sure, doesn't mean that he suddenly got tired and needed a ride. This was very intentional on Jesus' part. From the moment he enters Jerusalem, he wanted to make a public statement that he was the promised Messiah. With his arrival, the die is cast. There will be no turning back. The crowd had previously tried to take Jesus by force and make him king. The disciples were told to not tell anyone that he was the Messiah. But this time, Jesus intentionally wanted to publicly reveal his messianic identity. 
Though he knew of the Pharisees' plot to kill him, the time had come for God's plan to rescue humanity to unfold. Jesus had planned everything out to the last detail. Not for a moment Jesus was caught off guard. He is worthy of our worship and adoration because he is always in control of all things. John 10, 14 says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep and I have other sheep that are not of this fold, I must bring them also. And they will listen to my voice so there will be one flock, one shepherd. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. The two unnamed disciples return from the village bringing the colt. They threw their cloaks on it for Jesus to sit on. And Jesus then enters the city. He enters Jerusalem riding on a donkey that had never been ridden before. Although I've never tried to ride one myself, I, one of the things I learned about donkeys is that it takes some time for them to get trained. They are usually considered stubborn, and they don't react well to unfamiliar situations. If a donkey doesn't want to do something, it will take forever to get him to move. And at times, he will just plant his feet in and not go anywhere. Not so with Jesus. Psalm 8, 6 through 8 tells us that Jesus had been given dominion over all creation and all things had been put under his feet. All sheep and oxen and all also the beasts of the fields, the birds of the heavens and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas, King Jesus had complete authority over the colt. And the promised Messiah, the, the perfect Lamb of God who was going to be slain for our sins, he enters Jerusalem riding on a donkey also as a fulfillment of God's word, as a fulfillment of Zechariah 9. It was a prophecy that says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a coat, the foal of a donkey. Now, what do we know about the crowd? Well, most likely, this is not the same crowd that five days later demanded Jesus' crucifixion. The crowd here is composed of Jews that had come from Galilee to the Passover feast. They were the ones that were also the ones that were following Jesus around. They had heard of, of his fame. They, they had seen Jesus heal the blind man. These were people that were curious about meeting Jesus. They were drawn to him. Not as the promised Messiah, but because of his miracles. So when Jesus entered Jerusalem, they welcomed him by spreading their cloaks on the road and by waving leafy branches, which were customary means to welcome a king. The song that the crowd sang is a messianic quotation from Psalm 118, 25 and 26. It says, save us, we pray, O Lord. Hosanna means save us now. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
while the crowds had a different expectation of what Jesus was going to do for them while they were longing for a temporal savior, Jesus planned and displayed a public demonstration of his messianic identity. Jesus revealed himself as king, a savior who would not only fix Israel's immediate problems and, and grant them deliverance from home, from Rome, but a savior who had come with a mission to rescue and save not only Jews, but the whole world and to offer them extravagant grace and bring them salvation. Now, what does this mean for us today? Three things. First, Jesus' triumphant entry was nothing like a Roman triumphal entry. You see, when a Roman general returned to Rome after a conquest, after a victory, he would be riding in a chariot. Priests would burn incense in his honor, and he would receive praise from the people. In, his, in this extravagant parade, he would display his trophies of war, as well as the prisoners he had captured. On the contrary, Jesus entered the city in lowliness, weakness, and service, humbly riding on a donkey. As we follow in Jesus' footsteps, a likewise humi humility must be displayed in our lives. Secondly, the triumphal entry is, not, is, only, is only triumphant when we consider what Jesus is about to accomplish on the cross. Jesus is welcomed as king as he processions into Jerusalem, but he knows the cross waits for him. He had come with a mission. And on the way to the cross, Jesus meets enthusiastic fans. People who liked Jesus. They were amazed by his miracles and wise words. They, they were impressed with the fact that, that differently than any other religious leader, he spent time with sinners. Jesus was a hero. And the crowd assumed that he was going to make their lives better. They were enthusiastic fans. Unwilling to become true followers. You see, the problem with fans is that they are not invested. They are not fully committed to a cause. And at the end of the day, they have nothing to lose. They are quick to criticize and they only stick around when things are going well. The crowd had high expectations of Jesus. They tried to make him fit their boxes. And they saw Jesus as revolutionary, not as someone who purchased their freedom and ours with his own life. Could it be that at times... We find ourselves in the same dilemma. We want Jesus to move in our lives our way. We want him to fix our problems, to put an end to a, to a deadly pandemic, to protect us from harm, to make us financially prosperous, to strengthen our marriage, to restore our relationships, to grant us success. We expect that if we recognize him as king, he will work on our behalf. But rather than fans, Jesus is calling followers, people that will lose their lives for his sake, that will pick up their cross daily, that will follow after him, that will trust his perfect ways and, and promote his kingdom by living on mission for him and pointing others to Jesus Christ, to himself. My challenge for us this Palm Sunday is that we will not join the crowd that wants Jesus' hands. 
that we will not join the crowd that is only interested in his miracles, but that we will be a part of the crowd who long for his presence at every moment of our days in, in difficult times, in trying times, in times of peace, in times of sickness, and in times of health. May we shout, Hosanna, save us now. Lord, save us from the bondage of sin that enslaves us. Lord, save us from our selfishness. Save us from our self-sufficiency, from our short-sightedness and our fears about what tomorrow will bring. Lord, save us from our ignorance and our disbelief. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And lastly, Jesus first came as a humble servant riding on a donkey. He emptied himself, taking on the likeness of humanity. And when he had come as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Our king is coming again hallelujah and while only a few bowed before him in the first time his he came in his second coming he will return in power riding on a warrior horse to reign forevermore god has given him a name that is above every name so that at the name of jesus every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue will confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father are you waiting have you surrendered every area of your life to his lordship? And are you ready to welcome Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords? Let us pray together. Father God, we are so privileged, so thankful for the amazing opportunity that we have to be here this morning, hearing from your word. And God, I trust that your word will accomplish its purpose. That your word will, will shape and mold and challenge and, and, and encourage us this morning. God, we want to submit to your word. Would you transform our lives? We are so thankful that Jesus, Jesus came, came as a humble king riding on a donkey but we are also full of anticipation that he will want he will return and he will rule and reign forevermore so we surrender our lives to you we we surrender every area of our lives we surrender our our fears and doubts and our future into your hands trusting that you are in full control of everything we honor you today. We worship you, King of kings, Lord of lords. We worship you and we bow before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing this closing song and be prepared to continue to worship the King the rest of the week. God bless you. across the pages of time he who made every living thing behold him he who heard humanity's cry left his throne through wake as a child he became like the least of us Behold him, Jesus, Son of God, Messiah, 
the lamb, the roaring lion. Oh, be still and be holding. He who died with sinners and saints. Heal the blind, the lost, and the lame. Even now he is in our midst. Behold him. He who chose a criminal's end. Paid with the blood to settle our debt. Very dead as we rose to life. Dear God, thank you for allowing us this time together. We behold you, Son of God, our Savior, our Lord. Blessed be your holy, holy, holy name. We surrender our lives to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.